My view is that insofar as the public universities are concerned, autonomy that will enable them to do some of the things that Mogalu spoke about towards the end of his presentation, namely the reform of the curricula, the whole question of manpower development, and the issue of pedagogy, will only come if they have, if they are able to have more resources, almost up to equal or more than what the government is giving. Is it possible for our tertiary education to have autonomy? Here, I must say that when we are talking of autonomy, actually, we are talking of the public funded universities because I'm working from the assumption that the private universities will have autonomy relate, relative to uh, their ownership in some way or form, insofar as it's being run as a semi profit making entity, even when they are advancing knowledge. My view is that insofar as the public universities are concerned, autonomy that will enable them to do some of the things that Mogalu spoke about towards the end of his presentation, namely the reform of the curricula, the whole question of manpower development, and the issue of pedagogy, will only come if they, have, if they are able to have more resources, almost up to equal or more than what the government is giving them. So ju just a rough calculation. If, for example, the federal government of Nigeria is giving the University of Lagos, just hypothetically, they are giving them $100 or 100 Naira every, every year. If University of Lagos really want to develop or generate autonomy for itself in decision making and policy making on a range of issues, in particular those ones that Mogalu spoke about. I, I am not bringing the fourth one because the fourth one on regulation falls eminently within the domain of government because there is little room for uh, self-regulation among a university except if you are talking of uh, bringing visiting professors to grade papers and the rest. But the universities must put more effort in raising their own resources if they want to have some modicum of autonomy. So quite frankly, I'm not sure that with the present structure the present arrangement in their relationship with government, they will be able to achieve that. And the only way they can achieve that is to raise resources. And the only way to raise resources to move as some, along some of the lines that uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Amadi uh, well articulated in my view. The third issue, which, the second issue, which is closely related to that, is political interference. What is the source of political interference in our universities? I mean, the most striking illustration of this in recent times is what happened at University of Lagos. When a chairman of the board removed the VC, the VC complained to some higher up, and before you know it, the chairman of the board was not even consult, uh, consulted before the old VC was restored. Therefore, again, the political interference in universities, I'm talking now of public funded universities because as the discussion moves forward, I think it's important to begin to make a distinction between public funded tertiary institutions and what I say about university is also true about the polytechnics or the schools of education and the rest. Uh, that interference structure is built around three pillars. One pillar is the funding which I spoke about. So that is the link with the autonomy that I was talking about. The other pillar is the fact that, and I'm sorry to use the word, there, there seems to be a lack of confidence among some of the people who work in the university. So much so that when they need, when they need a favor to advance them, they appeal, they appeal to the very bodies that ought to, that they ought not to do, which would have given them the autonomy. I give a good example. The, the story is told, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of you here or those in the university would have heard of it. When Obasanjo was in power as the head of state, he received a visit from an associate professor from one of the universities I will not name, and his conversation with Obasanjo centered around the word chair. He was telling Obasanjo that he wanted Obasanjo's help for him to get the chair. Obasanjo was torn because the way the phrase, you know there is a way you use a certain phrase and people will say, what are you talking about? And Obasanjo said, what is the problem? If you are if you are short of chairs in your classroom or in your in your library, I, I, will, I, I will tell uh, my ADC to bring about 200 chairs to your classroom tomorrow. And the guy said, no, that's not the chair I'm talking about. I'm talking about the chair of department of the universities. Now, I don't know whether Abbasanjo was playing mischief or he clearly understood the guy. Now, why do I bring this example about political interference? 
if the university people want autonomy and if they don't want interference they too in turn should not go outside to solicit outside powers for their own advancement because uh, as as professor Kweke would have testified this clear that in some of the universities, even Amadi, from what he was saying, is clear, uh, or even Mogalu at Fletcher, you will not go and solicit the support of even the board, the chairman of the board of the alumni association, not to talk of uh, of the governor of your state to come and to advance your your case, even when it's a, a state-owned university. So th that is the second thing I wanted to talk about. The third issue that I want to talk about, insofar as the higher education is concerned, is the question of how do we um, develop a regulatory system? Because this was the fourth important point that uh, Magalu spoke about at the conclusion of his presentation. How, in other words, how do we regulate? And this goes to governance, because regulation is another word for governance, uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, and, the, and the way of looking at it is to, who washes the washers? How do we regulate the universities? Now, there are three parts to university regulation. And I just spoke to one of them, but I like to amplify it. One is self-regulation. If the university have robust regulation, robust rules for advancement, robust rules for, 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 for promotion, and robust rules for granting their degrees, then it will be very difficult for other people to have a hand in it. By the way, let me just tell you that it's breaking news in the, in the past few minutes. Uh, and I want to report on it because I just got it on Twitter. And it touches something that Mogalu said at the very beginning of his presentation namely this question of cut-off marks for university. It's just been announced now in the past few hours that going forward, universities are going to determine the cut-off marks for the admission. It's not going to be jammed anymore. And I think this is progress. So that's part of the regulation I'm talking about. If, if when Jam was regulating whom the university should uh, uh, admit based on what is called that not meet the standard, that also undermines both the autonomy and the ex academic excellence that all of us strive for. The second point relating to regulation is that the regulation that is put in place must be protected by the university itself. In other words, if the university say that you've got to write eight articles and one book for you to become an associate professor, three books and 15 articles to become a professor, I think that's what you should do because that gears to the excellence that we want to promote rather than going to ask somebody outside the university, a traditional chief or whatever, to advance your case. The, the final point on regulation is we know there is external regulation for all kinds of things. The government comes in, whether it's the state government or whether it's the federal government in all countries. But the regulation has to be thoughtful. It has to be methodical. It has to be consistent, both in terms of setting standards and in terms of how universities are funded. And I thought I should make those three points on autonomy, political interference, and regulations. Thank you very much.